Good morning to everyone and welcome to today's session. Is there a life after death? Was what the people have uh, done a huge Vedantic discussion and ultimately they concluded that there is a life after death and that would be the re-exam of APPG in spite of uh, all the shame of uh, scam. Once more, within a short span, there is a wonderful paper once more reorganized. So, Dr. we invite the students of Guntur, Vaisag, Tirupati, Kakinada, Karnul and all the students who are sitting in their home and attending this session. <clears throat> are you sure the voice is loud and clear for the online students? Why the volume here is less? No, I need a little more volume. Yeah. You please check whether the online uh, voice is okay. Yeah. Let's make the start. Lymphatics from the testis drain into. We'll give an opportunity for the juniors also to pronounce their answers. What do you answer, doctor? Quick guess. Paraiotic. Group of lymph nodes is what you have to basically remember. <coughs> the lymphatic vessels will go to the superficial deep lymphatic vessels and ultimately drain into paraiodic. And a very important point that you need to know is the scrotum and testis have got a different lymphatic supply. There's a reason whenever there is any testicular malignancy, how will you do a biopsy? Never do it transcrotally. If you try to do transcrotally, you are opening up unnecessarily the scrotal lymphatics and leading to an unnecessary spread. Always transinguinally you need to approach the testis and do the testicular biopsy whenever you are suspecting any mass in the testis as a testicular malignancy. There is a reason from a surgical anatomical perspective. It is very important to know the lymphatics of the testis. Is the voice clear? Please ask that guy to check it. Or you keep the volume there so that uh, we are clear that volume is uh, okay and clear. <coughs> Cricothyroid. Cricothyroid is the only muscle, only laryngeal muscle, which is supplied by external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve instead of the recurrent laryngeal nerve is what you need to basically remember. Huh. This is a simple and a tricky question. 5th and 6th vertebrae, 6th is the answer, very good. So 6th cervical root is the one which typically get compressed whenever there is any herniation is what need to be remembered. I am very happy to see even Karnul and Anandapur also being online, very good doctor. So missile substance is always ribosome containing Rough endoplasmic reticulum is the one which is responsible is what you need to remember. Now doctor, so what is paramesonephric duct? Fundamentally, Mullerian duct is called paramesonephric. Mullerian degenerates in men. Wolfian degenerates in women. So the degenerated remnant of that Mullerian duct would be the appendix of the testis is what need to be remembered. So tell me doctor, is there any single tough question in this whole set of five? So what should be your score in anatomy in APPG 2014? Five out of five if you want the seat. Now, <clears throat> always the state MD entrance paper discussion is like a stock market uh, analysis on a morning news. So doctor, what is the golden figure everyone want to guess? Top mark. So let us try to do a guess on what is going to be the topper's mark in a scamless paper. Eh? Secretion of a hydrogen ion in the proximal convolutive tubule. Beautiful question. 
what is your answer doctor your your name doctor your name yeah huh rohita huh good good rohita proposes antipot of the exchange for sodium ion see doctor especially the juniors we have given a booklet of high yield topic list physiology may सर्वोन्नत प्रमुख टॉपिक कौन होता है नेफ्रॉन फिजियोलॉजी यू गो बैक टू दट हाईल टॉपिक लिस्ट बुक एनी एग्जामिनर मेन एग्जाम और री एग्जाम नेफ्रॉन फिजियोलॉजी ग्लोमलो नेफ्राइटिस इन पैथोलॉजी विदाउट दट देर इज नो पेपर सो डॉक्टर इफ समबडी आंसर दिस रॉन्ग एंड सेट इनोसेंटली Sorry, I thought it is H plus K plus A D plus means there is no excuse because nephron physiology is supposed to be you need to be sure with line to line. So, doctor, the fluid enters the proximal convoluted tubule and uh, the carbon dioxide. How is H plus I on uh, secretion occur in uh, the proximal tubule? You need to be sure. Carbon dioxide in the proximal convoluted tubule typically combines with water to form carbonic acid, and that is metabolized by the carbonic anhydrase, and that divides carbonic acid into H plus and bicarbonate, and that H plus ion is exchanged against the sodium ion, and uh, it is how the sodium H plus antipot, which is once more ATP driven. Is the one which is responsible for the H plus secretion and bicarbonate reabsorption, which typically happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. Ha! This is a beautiful question. Bar receptor afferent discharge. What is your answer, doctor? You thought it as A. A. See, whenever when will bar receptors uh, are stimulated? The bar receptors are stimulated. Whenever our pressure in the blood vessels either increases or decreases, so the bar receptors are there in the vena cava and heart. Typically, glossopharyngeal and vagus are the ones which carry the afferents to the brain from the bar receptors, and ultimately they reach a nucleus called. Nucleus tractus solitarius. What are the three important cranial nerves for which this is a common nucleus, doctor? NTS, N for nine, T for ten, S for seven. For all the three, NTS is the common, common nucleus. And the bar receptor information which has come to the NTS typically will lead to the excitatory discharge. Which secretes glutamine. That excitatory fibers release the glutamine into the caudal ventral medulla and cause activation of the caudal ventral medulla. When the caudal ventral medulla is excited, that leads to inhibition by secreting GABA on the rostral ventral medulla and inhibits the rostral ventral medulla. In turn, the rostral ventral medulla is the main regulator of the sympathetic nervous system, and that will send the excitatory fibers to the sympathetic preganglionic neurons. ये है एक बड़ा लंबा story. कहीं inhibition, कहीं stimulation. Ultimately, what happened is the important anxiety. Let us say BP increased, baroreceptors activated. Then the nucleus tractus solitarius activates the caudal ventral medulla. That in turn will inhibit the rostral ventral medulla. That in turn will decrease the sympathetic outflow, and that is how ultimately, reflexly, the sympathetic outflow diminishes whenever our BP increases, and whenever BP falls down, sympathetic system will get activated. This is the connectivity which you need to appreciate. Very long question actually. 
Now you can somebody the where is the score master? Please put a score. We have three kind, four kinds of questions, doctor. One is a spinal cord level questions. Even are you asleep? You are shaken during entrance preparation days. You will wake up and say, "Oh, it is paraiotic lymph nodes is the testis." You should. Otherwise, you are not uh, entrance preparing guy who is sleeping. Then second type, uh, the second type of questions are: you break your head to the wall also, you can't answer. That sort of uh, idiotic question. Some are there. If uh, both membranous labyrinth, bony labyrinth, both of them are absent, which type of syndrome it is? Uh, I straight away called uh, to my to my one year junior. He is a ENT surgeon. He is a professor of ENT. Suddenly asked this question. Now you tell the correct answer. Otherwise, I'll go and tell that you got ENT seat out of scan. So uh, very dirty questions. There will be ten fifteen in every exam. There are some where your guesswork is required. And some places uh, where your fortune is required. So four categories. Now you got the story, no? Uh, come on, tell me, score master. Out of seven questions, how many till now are very predictable? Most of them, except this question. This question require that intelligence. Intelligence, bolle to with no girlfriend or boyfriend in physiology. If you sincerely studied physiology in undergraduation, you will answer this. Huh? So this is important. Then how about question number six? Question number six. Nephron physiology. This also keep as a. So you need to have a careful kind of rate limiting uh, uh, question. The first five are definitely supposed to be answered because you carried your spinal cord to the exam hall. You are not a decerebrated animal, so then only you can answer that. Now let us go to the question number eight. Beautiful question once more. 